While giving the body a couple of days to dry off and properly harden the clear coat, I moved on to priming and painting all of the other components, starting it off with the dashboard and then moving along with all the other small parts that needed to be painted later on. And then I will be applying some color to various different pieces. To start it off, I'm going to paint the base color of the interior, the seats and the side panels. As I will be applying a black to the side panels as well, I figured paint these first, give them some time to dry, mask them off later on and then apply the second color to them. After applying two coats of the interior color, I moved on to doing some exhaust and other chassis components in a titanium silver. I also painted some other chassis components with a regular silver but didn't bother filming that as it's pretty much the same as the titanium silver on film anyways. So with all those various colors done it was time for the final color and that is black. I started with the main interior tub and also did some other interior components alongside a lot of chassis parts which I didn't really bother showing as it's just a lot of black. As you guys probably know by now, the main colors are done with the airbrush and then the fine detailing is done with a brush and some Vallejo paints. And in this case, some insert panels on the dashboard where a couple of buttons are for the stereo, uh, cruise control and some various other functions I really don't know about. I did that in a gunmetal grey. With those inserts on the dashboard done, I took out the steering wheel, did the top and the bottom piece in the same gunmetal grey as well, and then moved on to the door panels where I did the window switches, the door handles, and another handle on the door for closing the door and opening the door.
Now alongside those gunmetal grey accents there are also a couple of black accents needed. In the headrests of the seats the real ones have a sort of mesh or grill uh, for the air to flow through. It also comes with the photo etch that uh, I got from the bumper set that I, I added to the body. But I really didn't want to bother just drilling that out, filing it nice and neat, and then screwing it up with a photo etch piece. While it is a lot easier to just paint it by hand and it looks exactly the same in my eye. So I did the front and the back just by hand really carefully. While I had the black paint on my brush anyway, I also took out some chassis components to simulate some of the rubber bushings and also some dust prevention thingies on the axles. Instead of going with some aftermarket shocks in a fancy purple or green, I just went with the black springs. With the black pieces now done and the gunmetal pieces dried up, I could move in with the secondary color just for a couple of highlights, and that is of course the silver. And of course, as always, to finish off an interior and make it look complete and realistic, it is time to add some flocking. In my case, I'm using the trusty old Humbrol enamel paint as that dries really slow and it looks really good underneath the black or grey flocking to simulate a sort of greyish carpet, the same as in most regular cars. Now, it is important to use the same color paint as you are flocking as the flocking is completely see-through otherwise. So if you were to use a red paint for instance, it would look like some red speckled black paint-ish thingy. And that's not really what you want. So match the color as closely as you can to the flocking or do it in a base coat like I did with the black and then use a transparent glue like watered down wood glue. That will also help stick the flocking to the part. And after all that flocking and detailing, pretty much all that was left was some final assembly. All of these pieces were just glued with some Zap CA glue, or super glue otherwise known as, and that's pretty much all there is to it for this interior. 